So today, second grade, we are going to begin to make this overlapping bottle collage. And it shows color theory, and it's showing how red and, red and blue make purple, and red and yellow make orange, and then yellow and blue make green. And where the bottles overlap, think of the yellow and blue bottle overlapping to mix and mix the secondary color, which is green. So the way that you're going to start this assignment, you're going to start with a large white piece of paper, and you need to write your name and the day you have art. Day A, day B, day C, whatever day you have, write that under your name. And then on the tables, I'm gonna have these vessel folders. And there's lots of different vessels in here to use. And um, they have different parts to a vessel. They have the lip, the neck, the body, and some of them even have some uh, something interesting down here at the foot of the vessel. But you wanna find some different shaped vessels, different sizes, some tall, some short, some wide, some skinny. And you're going to start with your first vessel right at the bottom of your paper. You're going to line it up with the bottom edge and then try not to have it hang off the side. You could have it hang off the side, but try not to. And then since these are paper patterns, they're going to be a little tricky to trace around. You're going to have to definitely keep your pencil straight up and down. If you hold it like you write at an angle, it's going to slide right underneath there. So you want to go slow, keep your pencil straight up and down and trace around each of these vessels with your pencil neatly. If you make a mistake, simply erase and try again. Now when I do my next vessel, I want it to overlap this vessel. So I don't want to leave some space between, I want to overlap. But I'm going to trace the whole thing. I'm not going to just trace the part that's outside of this because we want it to make that additional shape. And you're going to trace four vessels, so keep that in mind. When you start to trace your second vessel, it should be somewhere near the middle of your paper. If it's too far over to the right, then you might need to pick a different vessel so you have enough room for your last two that you have to draw. So we're drawing four total. So there's my second vessel. So now I'm going to pick a skinnier vessel so that um, I don't run out of room on this side. I'm going to overlap so I line up the bottom of the vessel with the bottom of the paper. And then my last vessel is going to be probably not this one. I think it's a little too wide. I'm going to try this one. Now, you never want to overlap three at the same time, so I never want to take this vessel and put it this far over to where it overlaps two vessels at the same time, so it's three vessels overlapping each other. So I want to make sure it doesn't touch this space here. And I want it, I'm going to scoot it over so it lines up with the edge of the paper on this side too. After you trace around your fourth and final vessel, then I want you to outline heavily with a black crayon. So take your black crayon, press really hard, and make a dark, heavy outline. So you're going to trace all of your pencil lines until you end up with a paper that looks like this. So now, once everything's outlined with black, you're ready to paint. So you're going to get yourself a paint tray, a watercolor mixing tray. You're going to get yourself a water basin. and. You're going to get one each of the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. And I picked this yellow to show you how to clean it off if you get a yellow that's messy. The way that you clean off a watercolor if it's messy is you get clean water on it, move it around, rinse your paintbrush off, get, get some more clean water, move it around, rinse your paintbrush off, and you keep doing this until the yellow starts to look like yellow and not green. So I'm going to put a puddle of water on the top of each of these colors. And I'm going to pick one. It doesn't matter which one I pick right now. I'm going to pick one to paint the first vessel. And since I'm right-handed, I work my way from left to right. So I'm going to pick red first. I'm going to gently touch the watercolor with my the bristles of my paintbrush. I'm not digging down deep into the paint. And I gently touch it, and I'm going to paint in the first vessel, just this front part. And it's okay if I go outside the lines a little bit onto the background because we're going to cut this out later. So you want to try and paint as neatly as possible, but if you accidentally go outside of the vessel itself, that's okay. Now I stop when I get to the crayon. I'm not going to paint this part red. Now I'm going to rinse my paper shop. I'm going to pick a second, I'm going to skip a space and pick a second primary color. And I'm going to paint this space 
the second primary. Now this space, I'm going to mix the two primaries I just painted together to paint this space. So I'm going to rinse my paintbrush off. I'm going to get some yellow and I'm going to put it in one of these little divots around the edge of the mixing tray. And the way that I do that is I get paint on my paintbrush and then I pull my paintbrush across the edge of the little divot. Now I'm going to rinse my paintbrush off because remember you need to rinse your paintbrush off when you change colors. And now I'm going to get some red on my paintbrush and then I'm going to mix it around to make orange. Now that's pretty red. I think maybe I'll add a little bit more yellow. So I'm going to get some more yellow. Sometimes when you're mixing the primaries you really need a lot more yellow than you do the other color that you're mixing. Alright so that's a pretty good orange. So now I'm going to paint orange here between red and yellow because red and yellow mixed together make orange. So this space where the two overlap, I paint orange. Now I'm going to rinse my paintbrush off and now I'm going to paint the primary color I have not used yet, which is blue. So I skip a space and I'm going to paint blue. Alright, and now I'm going to mix blue and yellow together to paint this space right here because blue and yellow are right next to each other they overlap here so I need yellow and I'm going to find a new divot to put some yellow in rinse my paper shop because I'm changing colors and just get a touch of blue mix that around to make green so you need way more yellow than you do blue and I'm going to paint green here alright and then you're going to skip the space right here and right there you're going to skip that space and paint this the first primary that you used. So I'm going to go back to red and this vessel right here is going to be painted red. And remember when you're painting you never push the paintbrush away from you, you always pull it. Alright now I'm going to rinse my paintbrush off and now I'm going to mix blue and red together to paint this little space and this little space with what's made. So I'm going to get some red on my paintbrush, put it in one of the little divots. Rinse my paper off, get a little bit of blue, and mix it around. And that little space is violet, or purple, and this little space. Because when red and blue mix together, they make purple. So after you're finished painting, you're done for the day. I want you to go put your watercolor ovals back over on the counter to set out to dry. I, no, I'll go ahead and clean the paint tray off. You'll just set this in the sink. But take your little paint ovals and set them on the counter. And then I'll come around and get the water basins and the paint brushes out of your way. And you're going to put this on the drying rack. The next time you come in, when the paint is dry, you're going to cut this out. And so I'm going to go ahead and cut this out even though it's still wet. I don't have a dry one. But when you get yours back, yours is going to be nice and dry. So when you cut yours out, I want you to cut right along the black crayon line right against the outer edge of the black crayon line. And you're going to have to be real careful as you cut around so you don't tear. And this is why it's okay if you splatter a little bit. I'm going to come in from this side to get down to that corner there. And then I can continue to cut around here. So you cut off all the background paper. And I have a little bit of background right here because this, these two vessels didn't overlap. There's a hole there. You can do one of two things. You can leave the white there or if that bothers you, you can cut straight in and cut this little white part out. It's really up to you. If it's a tiny little white space, you might just want to leave it. It might not be worth it. But since this is a little bit bigger, I wanted to show you what you do. So you cut that little part out and then you're going to get a big black piece of paper and you're going to get a white crayon and you're going to write your name on the black paper and then the day you have art. Day A, day B, day C, whatever day you have, flip it over and then you're going to take your dried painted paper and you're going to put a frame of glue on the back. Don't just put glue right here in the middle and don't just put a little smidgen of glue for each vessel. I want you to put, put a big frame of glue. So put a frame of glue around across the bottom up into the neck of each of the vessels all the way around. A frame of glue, very important. 
and then you're going to carefully pick up your paper and line it up with the bottom edge of your black paper mm -hmm. and you're going to pat that down to get it stuck and then this will go on the drying rack on the second day and then you're done with your overlapping bottles showing the primary and secondary colors and you show how the secondary colors are made by mixing the primary.